Hey everybody, today we're looking at throttle position sensors. Your throttle position sensor is a really important sensor in your car. It basically tells the ECM off where your throttle is open. And how it does it, it does it by using a rheostat or a potentiometer right there. And that's your throttle position sensor. And it's connected to a throttle shaft. So when we turn the throttle shaft here, we actually move inside the variable resistor the potentiometer and in turn it sends a signal back to the ECM through those wires there. Now we're going to pull this connector off here and look a little bit exactly how it connects inside and we're going to talk about the function of it and how it's constructed to make that happen. So just a little explanation on how the TPS works inside. TPS sensor is a, is a rheostat or a potentiometer and what we really have is a resistor that goes from a 5 volt reference voltage from within the ECM. So the ECM is sending a signal to the resistor and it's going to come out at a ground and we're going to put a movable contact inside of this sensor. So we're going to bring it to this side initially. So when our movable contact is close to the resistor, we're going to have near source voltage or near the reference voltage range. So almost 5 volts and that 5 volts is going to be sent back to the ECM so the ECM has an understanding of what position the throttle position is in. So in this case we could see we'd be at full throttle here. If we move the movable contact to the other side, let it sweep over here, we'd be down to idle position at this point at near zero. So we call this idle, so about half a volt. Now as we carry that movable contact up, depending on where it sits on the rheostat's resistor, we're going to have a change in voltage halfway, about halfway between 0.5 and 5 volts. Now the range that your sensors are going to have is going to be specific to, to your vehicle, but they generally fall in the range of about half a volt to near 5 volts. And that's how the TPS sensor works. To find on your throttle position sensors how to test it, you're going to disconnect the connector first. Now throttle position connectors look different from vehicle to vehicle, but we've got a three wire sensor here. And they generally are three wires. You're going to have a power supply in of 5 volts, it's called a reference voltage. And you're going to have a ground and you're also going to have a signal wire. We have to find what is what. First thing we're going to do is look for the 5 volt reference wire. And we're going to use a probe. In this case, I've got an alligator clip hooked up to my voltmeter. I'll put it on DC voltage. You can use 20 volts if you have a, a meter that doesn't have an automatic range on it. Mine's automatic arranging, so it's going to find its own voltage here. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure I got a good ground with my my ground probe, and. Uh, I'm then going to take my red probe and I'm going to start probing inside the connector to find where the 5 volt reference is and I found it right off the hop. It happens to be that one there and you'll see the other ones there are not generating voltage. So that wire happens to be white so I'm going to keep that in my mind. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put my meter to ohms function. I'm going to go to the beeping function. I want to find the ground side of my throttle position sensor wire. So we're going to start probing these and I'm going to exclude the very first one that I found was 5 volts power and I'm going to look for an audible beep. There it is. So that's telling me because this is a, a potentiometer or a rheostat type sensor we're going to have a power in and a ground out and the third wire will be the signal wire. So let's look at the color of the ground. It happens to be black, white is power and that means my blue wire is a signal wire. Now we're going to plug it back in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to back probe that signal wire and I'm going to use a little pin here and I'm going to sneak it alongside. You can use and why I'm not doing this from the front side is I don't want to damage the, the connection inside so if we back probe it's a nice safe way 
to get access to that sensor. Then I'm going to go to the ground side with my other with another pin. It's okay, I'll edit out what I don't need. <laughs> now I'm going to go to the ground side with another pin, and I'm going to back probe that as well. I'm going to make sure that I'm pushing all the way back in alongside of it. All right. And I'm going to connect my alligator clips onto that. So there's my ground side. I'm going to probe here. And I'm going to probe with my positive side. Over there. Okay. And I'll put my meter to DC voltage and make sure my key is on the car and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open the throttle on it and you can see now that when I'm in the idle position my throttle's closed I'm at about 0.5 volts when I open the throttle what I'm looking for is a nice smooth progression no dropouts it should not drop down to zero at any point It'd be a nice smooth progression up all the way up to close to five volts and you can see that my variable resistor within the sensor is working good. It's going up to about almost four and a half volts, 4.4 volts on here. Now that's going to be dependent on how much charge is in the battery. And of course, the state of the battery makes a difference on what that reading will be. And about half volt when it's sitting at the idle position. So I know that sensor is working properly. So I've tested it for voltage into the sensor for reference voltage. I've determined that I've got a good ground on the sensor. I've also determined on the signal wire that sends a signal back to the computer that uh, that what that internal component of the TPS is working as well. So the sensor is functioning. Now another thing you can do when you're when you're testing these is to tap the sensor, and I'm going to grab a little screwdriver to do that. Now another thing you could do with the TPS sensor is to determine if there's any any issues on it is to wiggle the sensor and the wires on there. Make sure there's no nothing affecting the readings on there. So it's staying stable. And to tap the sensor. And I'm going to use the end of a screwdriver here to do that. And I'm going to continue moving it to different positions. See if there's any dropouts. It's called dropouts on that sensor. It's staying stable. I'm raising it, of course. But there's nowhere that it's going to zero. So it's telling me there's no open spots in the sensor. So that's a good TPS that I have there. And that's essentially how you test the TPS. Okay, another thing you can do with TPS sensors is connect them to a scan tool and use your scan tool to check your voltages on, on the signal wire, what's coming out of it and being sent to the ECM. So I have it set up here so you got a pretty good image of the TPS being monitored on engine data. And you can see that when our throttle is in the resting position at idle, we're sitting at 0.53 volts, which aligns to what we did under the under the hood when we use the uh, the multimeter. So, and also it looks at the percentage of throttle opening on the bottom shows zero. And when we accelerate now, I'm putting my foot on the pedal. You can see a nice smooth progression up. And I also want to watch the graph here. That the graph is rising smoothly. And there's no dropouts indicating that I've got a, a good sensor here and I'm going all the way up to 100% up here, 4.41 volts, in this case at full throttle, and I'm gonna back it off until it comes right on down. And again, there's no dropouts coming down, other than obviously the smooth progression downwards. And I can, I can repeat this multiple times to see if there is any problems in any point where as it's supposed to be rising, it doesn't drop. So in the case of if you've got a good throttle position sensor in this case.